Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be my last book haul of the year. I think I have around 15 books to haul today. I did not expect to buy that many books in the last month or so, but I'm still heavily in my physical reading era, so I've just been buying books and reading them and I actually do have a fair amount that I've already read which is great. Some of these I've already shown in some videos either I've unboxed them in videos or I read them in a reading vlog so I will go through a majority of those first. I don't know if I'm gonna have like a Christmas book haul or a Boxing Day book haul. I don't really know if I'm gonna buy much after Christmas like for Boxing Day so this might be the last haul for a little while hopefully because I need to stop buying a lot of books and read ones that I already own. But let's just get into the haul. So the first two I've actually unboxed in a vlog. The first one is One Dark Window by Rachel Gilling. This I saw everywhere on Book Talk. Everybody was really enjoying this book. It is a fantasy book with like a slight romance element. Other than it being a fantasy with a romance and it being a duology, that is genuinely all I know about this. And I kind of just want to go into it blind. It's been a very long time since I've read fantasy, especially like adult fantasy. So I might read this like in January, February. I feel like this could be a really good winter cozy fantasy. So I'm excited to read this and hopefully I will love it as much as everybody else does. This other one I also showed in a vlog and that is Bring Me Your Midnight by Rachel Griffin. This is a YA fantasy. I think it's more like paranormal. I believe it's about witches. Tana's coven has appeased those who fear their power for years by releasing most of their magic into the ocean during the full moon. But when Tana misses the midnight ritual, a fatal mistake, there is no one she can turn to for help until she meets a wolf. This book is also just gorgeous. I love the cover and then the hardcover is also stunning. This is the front and we have the back and then there's also this beautiful map in the front and then I think the back there's also yeah and then this is the back. It is just a gorgeous gorgeous book and I really hope I enjoy this. It also has been I mean, it hasn't been that long since I've read a Y fantasy, but I'm excited to read this one. The next two I've also shown in a vlog. One of them I read, one of them I haven't. So we have Collide by Belle Cabra. This is the first book in the Off the Ice series, and I did actually read this. I, I think read half of it in a reading vlog, so I'll link that video down below. But I did finish this in November and I will talk about it in my October and November wrap-up. This is a college hockey romance and it follows Summer who has to do a paper on an athlete or athletes in general for like her sports psychology degree or whatever and she gets paired up with Aiden who is the hockey captain and they kind of don't get along at first but it's very much boy falls first, boy falls harder, it was very cute and I'm wondering who the next book will be about. I also did show this in the same vlog, I'm pretty sure, and that is Tame the Heart by Eva Hunter. I still haven't read very much of this. I am on page 82. I've been a little busy lately so I haven't had the time to sit down and read this, but this is a cowboy ranch romance. It follows our female character who basically is running away from her home. She is tired of being treated very fragile because she has like a heart condition. So she ends up in this small little town where she meets Charlie who runs this like visiting ranch, I guess, or like tourist ranch. And they're having some trouble with social media and stuff. And Ruby offers to help and like become an employee. I feel like I'm finally getting into the story now, so I can't wait to keep reading and hopefully I love it. I have a couple more that I've already read, but I haven't really necessarily shown in videos before. So we have Gothicana by Rue Nix. This is the, I want to say like UK cover. I'm not exactly sure. I own the indie like self-published paperback and I recently read this book in October and I absolutely loved it. I can't believe I still have not talked about it yet but I gave it five stars. I fell in love with the book and I saw this copy on Amazon and I was like well, why don't I just buy another copy? So yeah this is the 
UK cover, I guess. It is very, very, very pretty, but it gives me like very different vibes than the other cover. And then there's the new cover that is being published with, is it Bamble or Bramble? I never know what it is. Bamble Books, which is like a fantasy romance publishing company or like imprint and that's coming out in January and I pre-ordered that copy as well so I will have three copies of Kothikana. This follows Corvina who gets accepted into this very mysterious university in this castle on top of a mountain and it's very mysterious. There's like these rumors of people dying and people going missing and she essentially falls in love with one of her professors who is very mysterious and he's hiding a lot of secrets. This book is best to go into it blind. I literally knew nothing about this book other than it took place in like a castle and I fell in love with it. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the romance and the characters and just the whole mystery. It was fantastic and I'm so happy I have this second copy. Then I bought and read Reckless by Elsie Silver and Hopeless by Elsie Silver. This is book four and book five in the Chestnut Springs series. If you follow me on Goodreads, you probably saw my review for Reckless and Hopeless, so this is not surprising to you, but if you've only ever just watched my videos, you know that I did not really enjoy Flawless or Heartless, and I decided I would not continue the series and that Elsie Silver was not for me, but for some strange reason, I just felt so compelled to pick up Reckless. I think because Hopeless had just come out and everybody was loving it and everybody was so sad that the series was over and I was like, okay, maybe I should give the series a third try. I wasn't interested in reading Powerless, which is about Jasper and Sloane. I just wasn't interested in their romance. So I decided to just pick up Reckless and I read it an entire day, which I feel like is very rare for me now. I rarely binge a book. But I read this whole thing in one day and I was obsessed and then I immediately ordered Hopeless and I also read it in a day and I loved both of these very, very much. And I now understand why people love this series. I understand why people love Elsie Silver. I'm very excited for her next series next year. And that just proves to me that sometimes third time's a charm. You know, sometimes you do have to give it a third try. I'm sure you all know what these books are about, but Reckless follows Theo, who is a bull rider, and Winter, who is a nurse or a doctor. I think she's a doctor. And she moves to Chestnut Springs because her sister lives there. And Theo and Winter have a one night stand and Winter ends up getting pregnant. I feel like that's all I really want to say because I feel like you just, you just need to read it. It is so good. And then Hopeless is about Bo who is back from the military. He suffered a lot of trauma and he has kind of PTSD from that. And Bailey works in the local bar and she kind of comes from a very rough, troubled family. Bo and Bailey kind of hit it off and he suggests that they should have a fake engagement to kind of give Bailey some freedom from her family and from the town treating her like shit, basically. Very fun, very cute. I really, really loved this book. I gave Hopeless five stars. I gave it five stars, which if you know me, it's rare that I get five stars, but I loved both of these very, very much. And I also did order and pre-order the like traditionally published editions. I think they're from Bloom Books or Source Books or something like that, but I did order the other covers as well. Since I was feeling very generous giving Elsie Silver a third chance and ended up loving those books, I thought I would give Anna Huang another try and I bought King of Greed. I have already read this. I will talk about it in my next wrap-up. This is the third Anna Huang book that I have read and it was all right. You know, I don't obviously want to say too much, but I didn't love it. I thought it was going to be way longer. By the way, like when I bought this, I was like, this is short compared to King of Wrath. I do love these like indigo exclusive covers. I think they're so nice. I'm kind of tired of just like you know, the white covers. I like this like brown kind of rich color. Um, this essentially follows Dominic, who is this very successful businessman, and he is married to Alessandra, and they have been together for years, I think almost like 10 years or something like that. But Alessandra is feeling 
kind of unloved in their marriage. She is feeling like she is number two in their relationship and she is very much over that so she decides to leave Dominic and suddenly his world is turned upside down. It is a second chance romance, marriage in trouble. It had a lot of qualities that I did like but I think Anna Huang is not for me. Another one that I also already read was You Said I Was Your Favorite by Monica Murphy. This is her newest release. This is the, I want to say like fourth or fifth book in the Lancaster prep series. This was one of my most anticipated reads for the rest of the year and I did love it so I will talk about it in my next wrap up. But this falls Daisy who is very shy, very studious. She's very much a good girl. She kind of is a little bit more on the poorer side. Then we have Arch who is a Lancaster. His family runs the school and he is kind of reckless. He's a little bit of a bad boy. He is very, very wealthy. And Arch kind of teases Daisy a lot and they kind of have this like hate to love situation going on and they end up having to work in the headmaster's office every day. So they're stuck together working and obviously they end up falling in love. If you loved A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime, you will probably most likely enjoy this. It's kind of similar, but also kind of different. I'm just a sucker for a good girl, bad boy romance, and this definitely pulled through. The next one I actually did not expect to buy, and that is Done and Dusted by Layla Sage. This is the Dial Press published edition. I own the indie edition. I own the self-published edition, but I really, really loved this book and it's probably going to be one of my favorites of the year. So I figured, you know, why not buy the physical copy? I was at the bookstore and I saw it there and I was like, it looks really pretty. So I bought another copy of it. I'm obviously going to be buying the next books in the series, which will be published with Dial Press. So it just kind of makes sense that I also own the first book so that the paperbacks won't match. Even though I think this is like the same height as the indie one. I mean, they're almost basically the same size, but they are different with the coloring and stuff. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed this book. So I am happy I have another copy and I'm very, very excited for the next book in the series. This is another like cowboy romance. It follows Emmy who goes back home after suffering from a horse injury. I forget what she does, but she like rides horses and she fell off and got injured. And so she runs back home where she sees Luke, who is her brother's best friend. And he's a bad boy and a bachelor. And he runs the local bar. And he also does like riding lessons for kids at her family's ranch. And it's been years since they've seen each other and they immediately fall for each other. It is very cute, very quick and easy and like a simple romance and that is what I loved about this book. Then I bought the Berkeley published edition of Barbarian's Mate by Ruby Dixon. This is the sixth book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. I am slowly collecting all of the Berkeley editions. I really, really love this series. I read it years ago, I think back in 2019, and I more or less gave the books in the series like either a three or a four star. So I do really love this series and I want to collect all of these pretty editions. I'm really, really loving these covers. I think they do such a great job with them and I love the spines as well. This is the last book for all the books that I've already read. So we have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This is the special edition, I guess. I thought it was an anniversary edition, but I don't think it is. It is a beautiful hardcover with sprayed edges. And the book is also annotated by Mia Sheridan. She basically has some annotations on the side, which is really nice. So I think once I reread this at some point, it'll be nice to get her kind of input on certain scenes and like why she decided to write something the way that she did. I just think it's so lovely. And I don't, I've never seen a special edition like this before where an author takes you through their writing process and shows you kind of the way that the book turned out. Oh yeah, and then this is the beautiful hardcover. It is just so pretty. I'm so happy I bought this edition. I loved this book. I read it years ago. I would love to reread it, like I said, but 
Yeah, I also love this pop of yellow in here. It's very, very pretty. Also, the hardback, like the pages are very floppy, which is so nice, but also so weird to have in a hardcover. And the last four I haven't read yet. So we have My Boyfriend is a Vampire by Eva Knight. This is Helena Hunting's pen name, I guess. This is what she will be writing under for paranormal romances, which is kind of fun. I'm hoping she'll write a lot more because I love a good paranormal romance. Obviously, I haven't read this yet, so I don't know if it's good, but I am hoping that I will love it. I love Helena Hunting's regular contemporary stuff. Also, I don't even know if you can get this in Canada yet because I bought this from Blackwell's, I think. I think that's the bookstore I bought it from. I really, really wanted to read this and it just wasn't popping up on any Canadian like retailer. So I could find it in the UK. So I bought it from Blackwell's. It might be up now for Canadian readers. I haven't checked. But this falls Hazy, who is on track to graduate top of her class at Burnham College. But she wants to have some fun along the way. So she lays her eyes on her mysterious and swoony new neighbor, Godric Hawthorne. And of course they fall for each other, but Godric has a secret. He's a vampire. It sounds like it's just gonna be like a fun vampire romance. So I'm excited to hopefully read this very, very soon. I was hoping to read this in October, but I never got around to it. Then I bought Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. This is Allie Hazelwood's first YA contemporary. Oh my god, and I just realized Ashley Poston, who wrote one of my favorite books, actually two of my favorite books, The Dead Romantics and The Seven Year Slip, she has a blurb here. A charming riot of a YA debut. I don't really know anything about this other than it is YA and I think both characters are part of this like chess club or something, but I really enjoyed Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood, which was her newest adult romance. And again, I'm I'm just wanting to always give Ali Hazelwood another try because I feel like I could really fall in love with one of her books. So I'm going to read this and hopefully like it. And I know it's YA, but I love a good little YA story. I love a little YA romance. I think it's just like cute and giddy. And I've heard good things about this. I've, I have seen some people give it five stars, so I have pretty high hopes for this. I've also heard that the male character falls first, or he's always been like secretly in love with our female characters, so that's always a fun time. I am very excited to read this, and it's quite short, so I feel like I could really breeze through this. Another author I'm giving another chance to is Lauren Asher. So I bought Love Redesigned. This is her newest release. This is the first book in her Lakefront Billionaires series. I read a couple books in the Dirty Air series. I really enjoyed Throttle. That was like my favorite in the series. And then I read the first book in her other series. The fine print, I didn't really enjoy that book, so I never continued that series, and I still have the last book in the Dirty Air series to finish, but I thought I would give her new book a try. I've seen a lot of people really loving it, giving it like five stars and everything. I'm just in a giving mood lately. I just want to give these authors another try and another chance, and I just, you know, want to find some really good books that I love and you know these authors are popular for a reason so I might as well try again. This I don't really know anything about other than I think our female character moves back to her like hometown. She is rivals with this guy who she's known since her childhood and I guess they renovate a historic house together. I'm not big on renovation type romances in books. I feel like it does work for TV shows and movies and stuff but I don't love it in books so we'll see how I feel about this one but I'm very excited to give this one a try. And then the last book that I bought was Night Shift by Annie Crown. This I think I saw on Goodreads and I think I might have saw it on a TikTok and it just seemed really cute and like a fun little read. It is actually a Wattpad book. 
So it says, when a college bookworm and the campus basketball star share a sexy encounter in the library stacks, things get complicated. Opposites might attract in rom-coms, but it takes a lot more truth than tropes to make it work in real life. I was reading some of the reviews for this and a lot of people said it was like their favorite Wattpad book that they had ever read and that they loved reading it on Wattpad and they're so happy it's a published book now. The cover is also just like adorable and I love a little college romance so I am very looking forward to reading this and hopefully also loving it. So those are all the books that I've bought recently. Let me know if you have read any of the books that I talked about and what you think about them or let me know any of your recent book buys. I didn't buy any books for Black Friday and I guess there's Cyber Monday coming up but I don't really plan on buying any books for that. Let me know if you bought any books for Black Friday and like what the deal was. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!